here we are again. Boys and girls, today I'm going to share with you a read aloud to go with our study of classifying animals. This read aloud is entitled Classifying Animals by Characteristic. In today's read aloud, you're going to hear about five groups of animals, and you should listen to find out the names of these animal groups and why scientists group them as they do. We're going to also focus on the point of view of the author. We're going to be pausing during the text to analyze a short passage to determine the author's point of view. Here we go. Listen for five groups of animals, their names, and why scientists group them as they do. Aha! I'm back! Does anyone remember me? It's me, Rattenborough! Another ex an animal expert and world traveler. We've experienced lots of animal habitats together, haven't we? From hot savannas to cold Arctic regions, we've watched hungry carnivores eat their prey with very sharp teeth, while herbivores feast on grasses nearby. Today, I've got great fun in store for you. I'm going to present a slideshow. But before I do that, I'd like to tell you a little about how scientists understand animals. Think about all the different types of animals on Earth. Grasshoppers, penguins, rabbits, lions, salmon, turtles, and salamanders are just a few. What other animals can you name? Wow, I bet you know lots of animals. And how do you tell them apart? How do you recognize or identify them? One way that we make sense of our world is by sorting things into categories or groups. Look closely at these pictures of a salamander and a squirrel and notice their characteristics. Can you name any way that a salamander and a squirrel are alike? How are they different? What other characteristics can you think of to help sort animals into categories? Okay, boys and girls, uh, as you listen to the following paragraph, I want you to complete the backside of activity page 2.2. I want you to think about why the author wrote this paragraph and did the author want to answer, explain, or describe the topic. In the mid-1700s, about 250 years ago, a Swedish man named Carolus Linnaeus became fascinated by the many different ways that people all over the world were grouping animals. Some people grouped animals by how they looked, others grouped them by their habits, and still others by where the animals lived. It was all a great mumbo-jumbo. So Linnaeus decided to use their ideas to create a worldwide system to classify or group animals based on their shared characteristics. The science of classifying organisms is called taxonomy. Using new ideas and tools, scientists have continued to study organisms and the way they are simple, similar, and different. Over time, ideas about how to classify animals have changed somewhat. All right, boys and girls, go ahead and answer uh, the questions on the back of activity page 2.2. Okay, let's move on. Scientists currently recognize three groups of living organisms based on important parts within their cells. Scientists generally agree that these groups of organisms are then divided into kingdoms, the main groups into which all living organisms have been further classified. Plants and animals are the two kingdoms that I know the most about. And today, I'm here to talk to you about my favorite one. That's right 
the animal kingdom. Taxonomists identify animals by their characteristics or special features that set them apart from others. They divide the five animal kingdoms into smaller and smaller groups, which e with each smaller group having more and more in common with one another. Each group has a specific name. For example, you and I not only belong to the same kingdom, the animal kingdom, but we both belong to the same phylum, the phylum known as chordata, because we share similar body characteristics. Most animals in the phylum chordata are vertebrates. A vertebrate has a backbone. Do you have a backbone? Yes, you do, and so do I. That is one of our common characteristics, one of the ways that scientists group us to show relationships between us. My backbone is smaller than yours because I'm much smaller. But if you look closely at this image, you can see how similar the bones are. Did you see that? Vertebrates belong to the animal kingdom and in the phylum Chordata. This phylum is divided into even more groups called classes. A class is divided into smaller groups called orders. An order is divided into smaller groups called families. Families are divided into smaller groups, each one a genus. And a genus is divided into even smaller groups called species. There are many, many species within each group. Now that you know that a vertebrate is an animal with a backbone, what do you think an invertebrate is? Yeah, that's correct. An invertebrate is an animal with no backbone. A little more than 95% of all animals on Earth are invertebrates. Think about it. More than 95% of all the species of animals on Earth are invertebrates. That's a lot. And most of them are fairly small. Fewer than 5% of all animal species are vertebrates. That means that you and I and all vertebrates belong to a very small percentage of all the animals on Earth. Mammals, that includes all humans, are literally just a speck. Now that you've heard a little about how taxonomists sort animals into categories, I'm ready to begin the slideshow of my worldwide travels, and I'm going to teach you all kinds of amazing things about animals. I met the most wonderful new animal friends while I traveled the globe, and so throughout this domain, I will show you my slides so that you can meet them too. They represent five vertebrate groups of animals. As they are introduced, remember to think about how a scientist might classify each one of my new friends. How is each one like you? And how is each one different from you? All right, let's get started. Here's Paolo the piranha. Oops. Here's Paolo the piranha. He lives in Colombia. This is Tabitha Toad from Brazil. Here's Anna Anaconda from Peru. This is Ebenezer Egret from South Africa, and meet Hilda Hippo from Tanzania. 
Please welcome Paolo, Tabitha, Anna, Eb Ebenezer, and Hilda to your classroom. They're going to appear from time to time in my slides as you learn about the five vertebrate groups of animals. Be sure to keep a sharp eye out for them. You never know when one of them might turn up. Aren't they a handsome bunch? They all belong to the animal kingdom like you and me. And they are like us in another way. They all have backbones too. Now, things get tricky. We're all animals and we're all vertebrates, but we're not all the same, are we? Heavens no. We have lots of differences as well. You and I belong to the class or group called mammals. What makes mammals different from other classes of animals is that they have fur or hair and their mothers give birth to live babies and feed their babies with the milk their bodies produce. You're going to learn more about these and other characteristics of mammals another day. My friend Hilda Hippo is indeed a mammal, even though it's hard to see the little bit of hair around her mouth and on the tips of her ears and tail. When I was in Tanzania, Hilda and I had a visit with a proud new mother hippopotamus. Look at her with her baby. So I'm a mammal, you're a mammal, and Hilda is a mammal. But my other friends have different classifications. One of them is in the reptile class, a scaly creature that likes to warm itself in the sunshine. You're right, that's Anna Anaconda. Isn't she beautiful? She's one of the largest snakes in the world. Though she is not poisonous, her strong mu muscles help her constrict or squeeze her prey. Another one of my friends is an amphibian, which means that she lays eggs and gives uh, and lives both in and out of the water. Most animals in the amphibian class have smooth, wet skin, but my friend's skin is rather dry and leathery. Who is she? You guessed it. It's Tabitha Toad. She likes, she looks like, she looks a lot like her close relative, the frog, doesn't she? Her skin helps protect her as it is camouflaged or able to blend in to the environment. My last two friends should be easy to classify because their classification names are much more common to all of us. Which one of my friends is a member of the bird class? Yep. That's right, Ebenezer Egret. Ebenezer is a warm-blooded vertebrate with feathers. Paolo Piranha is the last of my friends to be classified today. Which group does Paolo belong to? Well, Paolo is a fish. He has fins and gills and lives in water. Piranhas, though small, are thought by many to be dangerous because they have really sharp teeth. Don't worry. Paolo, like many other piranhas, usually feeds on dead or injured wild animals. Taxonomists believe that all of the vertebrates, vertebrate animals on Earth can be classified into one of these five animal groups. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. In the fish group, there are three different fish classes. Fish also have the largest number of species among vertebrates. Even though there are more than 60,000 known species of vertebrates on Earth, there are nearly a million and a half invertebrates, and a million of those are insects. Scientists continue to discover thousands of new insect species every year. You're probably thinking, how can this be? Well, it's because there's still unexplored areas of Earth, far into the rainforest, 
inside the cold ice of glaciers, within the hot lava of volcanoes, and deep down in the ocean. Perhaps one day you will discover new, a new animal yourself, examine and classify it by its different characteristics, and add it to our understanding of taxonomy. Let's think about what you've learned today. Scientists classify organisms, including animals, in order to show relationships between them. Animals are classified by common characteristics. Vertebrate animals have backbones, whereas invertebrates do not. Some of, some of them are warm-blooded, whereas others are cold-blooded. We'll learn more about warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals in other readings and read-alouds. Let's think about other ways that scientists might classify animals. It's important to consider where animals live, their habitats. Do they live in water or on land? Do they live in warm climates or cold climates? What covers their bodies? Feathers or scales? Fur or hair? Do they lay eggs or do they give birth to live creatures that look like smaller versions of themselves? What kinds of food do they eat? Plants, animals, or both? These are all important questions for taxonomists to ask as they work to group animals into categories that are easily studied. Boys and girls, in the upcoming read-alouds, you're going to learn much more about how animals are classified. Next time, we'll pick it up with the slideshow so that I can teach you about the groups of animals to which Tabitha Toad, Anna Anaconda, and Paolo Piranha belong. Can anyone make a prediction about which of my friends are warm-blooded animals like me? <laughs> well, you'll have to wait until next time to see if you're right. Bye for now.